Hello lovely people, today I'm going to show you all the measurements of this equipment. So if you haven't seen this, watch our previous videos, it's a Honda Jazz project, I did this amp rack for everything, and then here we have a Helix DSP2 and two hertz amplifiers. So these amplifiers, if you can see, I repainted them, so now they look fresh, sparkly, and like brand new. So these amplifiers are Hertz, HDP4 and HDP5, four channel and five channel. This is an old DSP and this is a Bluetooth adapter. Now, while I have all this gear here, I did measure the distortion of everything. So I did measure the distortion of this DSP using analog inputs, uh, using the Bluetooth, which has a digital output, and I measured these amplifiers separately. So now, we're gonna jump into the laptop and I'm gonna show you all the measurements of these gears. I think we're gonna start with the DSP. So this is the DSP.2 and this you can see is THD versus level. When I was testing this DSP, I couldn't test it properly because I had only the Focusrite Scarlett and it does only one volt, the analog outputs. And this DSP, uh, it can, it needs at least two volts to max out. So that's why you have see here as a voltage, I have only 3.3 volts out of it. I couldn't test it all the way up to six volts because this, this DSP is cap capable of six volts output. But even from this, we can see that it's super clean, not as clean as the new ones like the DSP Pro Mark III that I have, but plenty clean enough. So it does go down the THD here, we can see zero below 0 0.01. And this is plenty good enough because those amplifiers are not as clean as my Alpines. My Alpines do go down to 0 0.05. So uh, if I would be pairing this DSP with some of my Alpine amplifiers, uh, this DSP would be a bottleneck, but it's perfectly fine for this because it's uh, what, 0 0.00, six something like that and you can see it's super clean all the way like from one volt and all the way up to three volts this is on analog but i'm not going to use we're not going to be using this dsp on analog we're going to be using it on the bluetooth but just to know the capabilities it's plenty good enough no problems here if we have a look at the thd versus frequency there is a slight, slight here rise at the bottom end below like 40 hertz, but this is nothing. It's just 0 0.02. Super, super clean DSP. No issues here at the top end as well. Very, very clean. If we have a look at uh, the linearity, which is this one, super linear. There is like slight, slight deviation, but it's like nothing plus minus 0 0.2. Very, very good. However, here you can see, if I'm gonna remove this, it falls off a cliff after 22K, just because this DSP has a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz, so it doesn't play anything higher. But again, it's perfectly fine because we will be streaming Spotify on this, so it's not an issue at all. If we have a look at this one, so we can see, so this is at uh, three volts of output. This is a spectral and we can see that the second harmonic is the most prominent one at minus 86. It's not gonna be audible and all the other ones are below 100 dB. So there is uh, quite a few harmonics, but everything is below 100 dB. So it's perfectly, perfectly clean. The DSP is very, very clean. Same at high frequency, so this is intermodulation 18 and 20K. All of these harmonics are like 85 dB and lower. Perfect. And this is again, very, very good. The lower frequency intermodulation as well, 90, 87 and something and lower. Multitone distortion gives us of 15.96 bits, which 16 bits is like CD quality. According to today's standards, uh, this DSP is kind of average, I want to say, but since we're going to be using, again, as I mentioned, only for streaming Spotify, it's overkill for that. Now, I tested this on Bluetooth as well. So that Bluetooth dongle that I have, and you can see from this Bluetooth, I did test it all the way up to close to six volts. So it gives me the whole output. And this is something interesting. So you see this black line here is the THD. This bump is just uh, because of Bluetooth connection is not stable. It's nothing to worry about. So it is THD itself 
is very very low super clean but this top line is a uh, noise you see the noise so bluetooth has quite a lot of noise but distortion again it's very very low so it's just the noise and this noise you can see it here if i'm gonna go to this this one here you can see so if i'm gonna overlay uh, these two graphs there we go so this is analog versus bluetooth and you can see the bluetooth like here it looks like it doesn't have any harmonics or anything however you can see that the noise is like at about what about a minus 100 db so it's not going to be audible i don't think it's going to be audible the noise but this is just uh, for you to see the difference between bluetooth and analog bluetooth has a lot a lot of noise so we can see it even here if we're going to go to yeah so this is the 18 and 20k we can see that this is minus 40 db the noise so the noise potentially might be audible at higher frequencies especially which one is it this one so this is thd versus frequency and thd versus frequency is not fine it's nice it's all the way down there it's not an issue but the noise you can see it rises with the frequency and at higher frequencies the noise is quite high like above one percent so potentially it could cause a hiss uh, sound on the tweeters. You're not gonna hear it on like mid-range, mid-bass, but on the tweeters, it's gonna be hissing probably just because of that noise. So the Bluetooth, it is very noisy. And we can see it here as well. Uh, this is intermodulation, again, lower frequency is fine, minus 100 dB. However, at higher frequencies, there is noise so it's very very noisy bluetooth is very very noisy and you can see here on the multi-tone as well it gives us only like 7.6 bits just because probably this i would imagine it's caused by the bluetooth codec that we have so my laptop has a very poor bluetooth connection so probably because of that we will be using aptx so it might be a bit better but again for daily listening on spotify i think it's going to be plenty good enough so now let's go to the amplifiers which is let's check this one so let's start with this one this is the hdp5 so this we're going to be using for mids and tweets so if i'm gonna enable these are all the channels channel one two three and four so they do measure slightly slightly differently and the best one i had on channel two which is at four five watts gives me 0.008 percent which for like that kind of an amplifier is very very nice we can see some noise at higher frequencies here which is like this is the switching frequency of the power supply and it's kind of rising but it's very nice to see that all the harmonics are very very low like 90 db and lower so this is going to be uh i think it's going to be a transparent amplifier now let's have a look at the distortion the surprising part for me was again this uh, little peak uh, i tested two channels and i have this little peak on both channels but i don't think it's an issue the surprising part is the power rating because this is rated as 70 watts per channel granted it is 14.4 but i got at one percent like 52 or something so slightly lower but it's still perfectly fine because we have up to like 335 watts super super clean this is 0.01 which i consider to be very very good result anything below or at that level is a super super clean amplifier so it is third harmonic dominated second one is a bit lower but it's fine because again those harmonics are very very low and the surprising part that this amplifier is very very clean so this for mids and tweets 35 watts or something is going to be perfectly fine enough the intermodulation we can see that the noise is rising at the bottom end so eh, it is what it is but again everything 90 db and below so this is very similar levels to the dsp and that's what i mean that this is kind of very good combination of these amplifiers with that specific dsp high frequencies this is the switching supply as i mentioned and everything 80 db or less there is the, like there are some harmonics 
but I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Multitone uh, gives us good results, some more noise at higher frequencies. So we can see this from this one as well here. So here you can see that there is slightly more noise and uh, stuff happening at 10K, but again, 0 0.03 or a bit lower. It's not an issue at all. It's a very, very clean amplifier. Little power, very little power, but a very clean amplifier. One surprising thing is the frequency response that is not really linear. So you can see here, I did zoom in. So this is 2 dB scale. And you can see it has a bit more on the top end and a little bit less on the bottom end. So 103.3. 102 point slightly like half a dB plus minus half a dB. Again, since we'll be using this on an active system, this doesn't really matter. But if you would compare this amplifier with a totally flat amplifier, half a dB difference, you might be able to differentiate that this might sound a bit bright, a bit brighter than a totally neutral amplifier. Now this amplifier is a five channel, as I mentioned, and this is the subwoofer channel. So the subwoofer channel surprisingly gives me only uh, up to 1%. 320 watts, which is supposed to be much more. It is rated like 550 at 14.4. So I would expect at least like 400. So uh, it's a bit less, but it's gonna be fine. We still have like close to 300 watts of super clean uh, 0 0.1, which for subwoofer is perfectly fine. And if you remember, the subwoofer is a 500 watt rated subwoofer that is an oversized sealed enclosure. It's, it's acting close to IB, so it doesn't need a lot of power. One or 200 watts for that subwoofer is plenty enough. So even with less power that this amplifier produces, it's gonna be plenty good enough. And another thing is that that's a Honda Jazz that has only a 40 amp hour battery in the front and a very small alternator. So basically the less power we use, the better it is. The frequency dependent THD, and nothing like really interesting. It, it does go higher, but we're gonna be using under like 80 or 90 Hertz. So it's still below 0.1%. The surprising thing is this, which is the spectral is 50 Hertz tone. And we can see that there is a harmonic here, the second one. However, all of this is super, super low. Like my Taramps has everything like straight and you have all the harmonics here, which is like the higher frequencies and everything. But for this amplifier, is super, super clean. So my thinking that this subwoofer channel is kind of normal channels that are bridged and used as a subwoofer output. It's not like a dedicated subwoofer amplifier, I think. That's why, maybe that's why it has less power, but very, very clean subwoofer out. And frequency response. So this is for the subwoofer channel. We can see that there is no infrasonic filter. Maybe it's like it starts at five Hertz and goes down, but it plays all the way down. So it could be used for an IB subwoofer and it's rolling off at about 150 Hertz which is not surprising as well. So this is the five channel and this is the four channel. So the four channel, we will be using it for mid bass and bridged for potentially maybe a front subwoofer. Again, these are different channels, one, two, three, and four. So you can see some channels measure better than others. However, we still have everything like below 80 dB on some channels like th these. So it's just, yeah, third channel is a bit more noisier than others, but this 92 dB and below. There's some some noise here, but again, above 10K, it doesn't matter because this amplifier is gonna be used only for lower frequencies. Now let's have a look at the power. So this amplifier does, uh, similar to my Alpine Type X amplifier, which is as well class D, similar power wise and cleanliness wise. It's something like 0.015, which is super clean for mid bass, especially it's gonna be perfectly fine. It does have about a hundred watts, very like maybe 76, which is super clean. Then a hundred, very clean. 
and at 1% we're getting 113 watts plenty enough for mini base drivers and again this is kind of surprising for me as well that this amplifier is so clean td versus frequency again rising top end but again this is going to be used for lower frequencies 500 hertz and below and here you can see it's only noise dominated and thd is very 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 low super clean amplifier intermodulation distortion very clean, much cleaner than the five channel. So this is more important for the lower frequencies. The high frequencies are not that important, but this, it's very nice to see that it's so clean at the bottom end. Higher frequencies, yeah, not as nice, but it doesn't matter because it's a mid bass amplifier. The multi-tone, again, all looks good. More noise in the high frequencies. It gives us 15 bits, so a bit less than the five channel, but again, it's perfectly fine. I did, I did test it as well uh, with a 50 hertz note just to see how it does on lower frequencies because if I'm going to be bridging it and use it for like a front subwoofer it's interesting as well to see and we can see that it's super clean as well very clean all the way up to like 60 70 watts so this is for one channel and I did test it bridged mode as well so when you bridge it uh, it's clean it starts to clip here about 270 watts one percent 340 watts which is perfect and it's a lot a lot of power for a four ohm subwoofer because like most 10 inch subwoofers are rated like 300 350 watts so having 270 it's very very nice and everything is below 0.1 for a subwoofer if we're gonna bridge it it's very very nice super clean super super clean amplifier so i think these this combination of these amplifiers and this dsp is going to work perfect the bottleneck is the bluetooth adapter so if the owner is going to want we might change it for something a bit better because he has a pixel phone that does aptx hd so potentially he could have some better quality but uh the match between the dsp and the amplifiers is perfect just because of this THD profile that we have below 0.1 the DSP and the amplifiers are something similar as well 0.1 and lower or higher and the fact that DSP gives us 6 volts out and the amplifier can take up to 5 volts it's perfect we can keep all the gains down maybe turn them up just a tiny bit if we need to but this match is like made in heaven super budget and very very good so watch uh, future videos when we're going to be installing and tuning everything but these are the measurements of the hertz hdp4 hdp5 and helix dsp.2 so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one